Hello and welcome to the Runs Well podcast with me, Rick Pearson. And me, Ben Hobson. Today we're talking all things Achilles with physio Tom Goom. Oh, it's it's almost like, I don't know, I hurt my Achilles and you sort of, as a friend, reached out <laughs> to the to the world uh, and got someone on to talk about You overestimate me as a man. <laughs> uh, what I actually was going for, this is super, super useful, Achilles. Everyone's had a sore What do you mean Achilles. it's not about me? Everyone's had a sore Achilles, but it's Can not just about you, mate. Yeah, You're not know. Mr. Achilles. No, it's not. And the reason why we got Tom on is because we're talking about the Achilles as probably one of the main sources of woe when it comes to running and running (laughs) injury and all these sorts of things. And uh, we may well build on this and and speak to Tom again on many other different injuries. But for now, the Achilles is going to be our centre point. And it has nothing to do with me and my Achilles because it's technically fine. And Tom reassures me in that conversation. But we do get into... What the Achilles does, yep. why it's important for runners, why it can often be the victim of injury and, and uh, daft training, and daft training, and how to sort of like manage any sort of issues with it, and to come back to running better and stronger, and all those sorts of wonderful yeah, things. Yeah, I think it's it's like a one stop shop for um, Achilles questions. Yeah, I think Tom answers it all. He, he does, all, and it's you know like where you know the Achilles bone is connected to the calf bone. Well, anyway. well, that could be a jingle, couldn't it? Oh, Brilliant, God, great, I love that. All right, so, I love um, that. Um, so, so uh, tell us about your your running, Ben. You've got the, you've got the race coming up. What were you up to on the weekend? Are you back running? What was the crack? So, um, sort of like the knowledge in my head when I hurt my Achilles was like, don't do anything for a bit, and then mildly add some load to the Achilles to see how it responds. So, I've been doing that. You and me went for a little run the other day. Very easy zone two stuff. Didn't have any issues with it. So, in my head, I've chalked it off as yeah, it hurt. It might hurt again, but it's so far so good. So yeah. do some more running this week, see how it feels. But I, I mean, long taper. Yeah, mate, I'm, I'm, I've got total faith. I've got total long, faith. Long taper, and we'll just get there, and it'll be absolutely fine. But yeah. I, I feel fine with the running at the moment. It's, uh, I think that slight. Nah, I was going to say slightly. Maybe paranoia crept in as a little touch. Yeah. But anything that well, pain is a good indicator yeah, 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 of. Yeah. It's a good indicator. Like it's, you know, you got you got to be aware when you something hurts. Yeah. So yeah. um. When it did first hurt, I was like, oh, no, that's just what I need. Just what I just need. Just what I need. Yeah. But um, I think it's all right. Oh, good. I think it's fine. I'm, I'm good, more mate. positive, Rick. I'm fine. I know. Yeah. I know. That's good. Yeah. What about you? Uh, so I went down to um, went down to South Devon on the weekend. Love it. So me and a couple of mates, we kind of try and do like a weekend or like a night away. A couple of nights away, maybe. So this this was um. You and the boys? No, me and me and uh, me and a couple of uh, yeah, couple the, lads. Of the lads. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. Not your children. Yeah, not my children. No, no. Uh, so we went down no, lads, to lads, lads. Um, Hope Cove. Um, which is yeah, South Devon, very, very pretty down there. And on the Saturday, we did an eight-mile run. Mm-hmm. Weather was terrible; like f- it was like flash flooding sort right. of territory. Wow. Um, so we went along the coast path, um, and eight miles, very hilly, but great fun. And then we then we swam around Burr Island, which is a kind of classic swim. It's about a mile, yeah. Um, and the, we- the weather had abated at that point, which was important. So I'm not yeah, recommending people seas, go out and sort of swim in choppy seas. And we had all the safety stuff, you know, like uh, everyone was carrying a boy. And all that sort of stuff. Good, good, so good. I, don't, I don't want anyone writing in about irresponsible <laughs> swimming. Um, and it was it was amazing actually. It's like it's, it is a classic swim for good reason. You kind of you can go through um, the rocks and there's lots of kelp and it's kind of like a, there 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 are there are events on on, on at Burl Island swimming. So it's kind of it's nice. a, it's a known thing. So that was great. And I I do enjoy swimming. I mean I, I haven't done much of it at all, but it was great to get back in the water. And How all right then? How, as someone who enjoys swimming but hasn't done it, a mile seems like a long way to just, in the sea, to just like, sort of like re- yeah, rediscover I'd, your I'd passion a, I'd for it. I've done a bit. I've done a bit. Right. So I'd like, and I, I have swum in the sea a lot before and done like swim run events. Yeah, I know, stuff, I, know, so. I know. You've got previous. Got previous. You're so, not a novice. So yeah, and you know, was doing it in a, a wet sea, wasn't tempted to kind of, you know, be like, oh, but it's warm enough, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so no, so, and um, so yeah, it, but it, it was relatively far, um, but it was quite, it, I had paddles as well, arm paddles. You had a boat. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in a boat. I, I was one off. I was one <laughs> away from a boat. Anyway, so I'm doing that, and then, um, but no, feel 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 good. And then I've got this. Yeah, I've just got a ten miler coming up in, um, yeah, fifteenth of October, fourteenth, fifteenth. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm a, probably a little bit off going under the mile, but I'm, I feel, I'm feeling like I'm back to being relatively fit, which is a good feeling. Yeah, I'd say that, that I've got that sense of like. Uh, a slightly disjointed and broken training block, but still, it's been some good stuff. It's in been there. some good stuff in there, and yeah. you do sort of like I have got that sort of. Uh, I'm looking forward to autumn running with yeah. off the back of it and yeah, feeling, yeah, yeah. feeling hopefully Achilles, whatever. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a good. I like autumn running. Yeah, agree, mate. Spring and autumn are the best ones. So um, yeah, 
Uh, it's, it, it all feels good. It all feels good. Oh, well, that's good. Well, let's get Tom Goom and tell us more about the Achilles. Let's do it. Guest of the week. Guest of the week. Here in the studio. Guest of the week. Sometimes on the phone. Could be an athlete. Could be a physio. Or a complete unknown. Well, today we're speaking with uh, physio Tom Goom about all things Achilles. So, Tom, welcome to the Runs World podcast. Thanks very much for coming on. Thanks for the invite. It's uh, nice to chat about this. I know it's a common problem for runners. Wow. Well, well, it is because it, yeah, it's so common that Ben's got a sore Achilles. What so. a helpful segue. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I think a lot of people listening at some point will have probably had a small, a niggle or a slight sort of sense of dread on a run where uh, the Achilles has sort of pinged or sort of felt like it's kind of like given a little bit of feedback that you didn't really want and I had a bit of that the other day which was sort of I'd say it was manageable but I sort of did it did bring the the run the planned run was a little bit shorter than I wanted it to be but um yeah it's it's one of those things I think there's a it's a bit of sense of dread with it I think is a, is a part of the body that is reliant upon and especially with running and the Achilles you know it's anything Achilles is like <sighs> There's that intake of breath, like, yeah, yeah. oh, no, mate, not your Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, tell us, tell us about the, this wonderful tendon that we have and sort of its main function, probably, to begin with. Yeah, so the, the Achilles is one of the largest and strongest tendons in the body, um, and it does work very hard during running. It takes about six to eight times body weight each time your foot strikes the ground. So it's a hard-working tendon, uh, but it's also, like other tendons in the body, it's able to adapt to what we do. So if your running builds up gradually, the tendon gets tougher and stronger and is able to cope with it. So most of the time when we start to get pain is because we're doing too much and it's reacting to that extra load. Um, so that's that's often a big cause uh, for runners to get symptoms. And is that load in terms of mileage or is it in terms of intensity and what, what, how are those sort of things different and what, what's the effect on the Achilles? Um, it can be a number of different things. So um, if you run further, obviously, there's there's going to be more kind of cumulative stress for the Achilles. It's working out for a longer period of time. It's going to be uh, loaded over more miles, etc. So sometimes just pushing the distance will irritate the tendon. Uh, but increasing speed also does uh, because that's going to be more work for the tendon per stride. So within that session, it's going to be working harder. Um, increasing hill running also puts more stress on the tendon as well um, and quite often us runners because we're, we're not always that sensible we do some of these things all at the same time yeah. so Guilty. We, maybe do, <laughs> yeah, we maybe do hill sprints which are a great training session but you've got speed and hills together and that's quite a lot for the tendon if it's not used to it um, the other thing to factor in is tendons take time to recover so if we start to do back-to-back -back run days and we're not used to it that can also be challenging for the tendon. So I think if people are listening in, if you've got tendon pain, have a little bit of a think about what's changed in your running, what might the tendon not be used to, because that's often what would have triggered it to react. Mm, interesting. So, because I always think that like people probably think they're like doing sprinting and stuff is the, is the main thing that's going to aggravate or certainly damage the Achilles if it's not used to it. But it's actually really sort of any sort of, progression that's too fast right like i mean and that's probably where most people fall down with injuries that they go oh, i've got this race coming up and i'm going to try and fit in all the training in four weeks or something that's exactly it yeah and um, any progression that's too fast um and that's true of many injuries as you say because the, the body can't adapt quickly enough. So instead of adapting to, to what you're doing, it reacts to it. Um, and it's, it's not actually usually about damage. It's almost the tissue's way of saying, back off, this is too much. It becomes sensitive until you reduce that training back down to a level it can cope with. Is, the, uh, is your running style um, a factor here? So I would sort of instinctively think of someone who's more like forefoot or maybe a midfoot might be putting more pressure on Achilles than, a, than someone who's more heel striking is that fair yes yeah so if you um if you run with a four foot strike it does mean more stress on the achilles roughly roughly about 10 to 15 percent more load on the achilles in four foot strike 
versus rear foot strike. So that can be another change, you know, we, uh, that can lead to Achilles irritation is if someone's decided, okay, uh, you know, I've read online that forefoot strike is good. I'm going to move to that. So I'm going to move from rear foot to forefoot. Suddenly the tendon's working quite a lot harder and it can't cope with it. Um, there are other aspects in your running style that will make the Achilles work a bit harder. So if you overstride, um, quite often that means that those muscles like the calf and the quads and the glutes, they have to work a bit harder. Um, so that can be more stress on the Achilles. Uh, if you go into deep positions where the Achilles is in, is in more of a stretch, um, which is kind of halfway through your running cycle, um, that can put more stress potentially on the Achilles. So there's a number of different things we might look out for if we're doing a, a gait analysis for someone. Uh, I think the, the major sort of tricky thing, I guess, with tendons and, and, and particularly the Achilles is that tendons aren't like muscles. They behave in a different way when it comes to recovery and, and, and load and, and things like that. And tendons tend to quite sort of need a bit of load in them, don't they? If it's sort of in, in terms of that progression, oh, I've got an injury and you, you know, everyone always like rest. You've got to rest it. If you've torn a muscle, you'd be like, oh, you can't, you know, you've got to let it repair. But it, a tendon is different, right? Yeah, ten, tendon is is different, and it's it can be quite quick to aggravate, but quite slow to recover. But actually, the most injured body parts, you know, if you're talking tendon, talking maybe joint muscle, they all do need some load going through them because it's that that helps them to recover. Um, so much of it is about finding a sweet spot because you know, imagine with the you know someone listening in, you've got Achilles pain. Imagine if you went on crutches and you just didn't use that calf and Achilles, you didn't use that leg at all. Actually, the calf would get very weak. The Achilles would start to actually lose some of its strength because it's no longer being worked. So it wouldn't be helpful. And if you tried to run on it again, it, it wouldn't have the the strength and the capability to do that. So quite often it's trying to find that sweet spot. Can I keep going at a level that feels manageable for this? Um, and if you can't, if there's nothing that's manageable, obviously making sure you're checking in with a health professional and getting their, you know, their advice to how to settle it down. What, what role does a, um, a strong and functional foot play in helping the Achilles? I, I've dabbled in barefoot running, much to Ben's amusement in the past. And um, I know a lot of practitioners there say actually like a strong, a strong um, foot is going gonna, is gonna to mean that Achilles is maybe not doing quite so much of the work. And if you had a weak foot, therefore the Achilles is just taking too much of the load and you would get Achilles issues. Do you agree with that, that way of looking at things? Um, would you recommend people look at their actual foot strength when it comes to managing this kind of injury? Yeah, to some degree. I think probably the biggest thing, though, is calf strength. Like the calf and Achilles are, they're one and the same thing. The, the Achilles is the tendon for the calf muscles. So the, the, probably the thing that's backed with the most research is if you strengthen up the calf, that helps to strengthen the Achilles and the two function better then as a unit. So um, yes, you can look at some foot strengthening stuff, but the number one priority for most people is going to be trying to strengthen the calf and the other big muscles in the leg that help the calf when you're running. Um, so that would include your quads and your gluteal muscles. And um, you know, there's research showing that uh, people with Achilles pain can be about 30% weaker in their glutes. So quite often, actually, really, it's not just the foot, it's the whole leg um, can be stronger, particularly the calf. And is it that then, because you just said that the Achilles is maybe experienced in six to seven times body weight going sort of through it when people are running. And if that's the sort of, that's the sort of the crunch point, should we say of like if a weakness up the leg is kind of, it, it, it sort of almost missed because and the Achilles is the, is an unfortunate victim of that weakness because it's like the, the thing that's working hardest and is the smallest that's it yeah um you know it's the bit as you say it's it's carrying some of the largest load really during running um so yeah it's it's often going to be the area where we feel it and it's one of the most common running injuries um alongside knee pain you know things like patellofemoral pain also very common because that's another part of the body that works hard during running um and it's not that running is damaging to the knee, it's not damaging to the Achilles, but if we do too much, it, it irritates it. In, ter in terms of like preventative exercises, Tom, so what, what could we be looking to do at the gym or at home in terms of strengthening the calf, maybe particularly, but also the quads and, and the glutes? What would you recommend? 
So I, th I think, um, you know, it's, it's good to go with simple stuff that you'd be familiar with. Um, calf raises, single leg calf raises are actually a really good exercise for strengthening up the calf. And you can progress them on by, you know, holding weight in one hand or um, using weight in, um, in the backpack. That can work really nicely. It's just, just a simple calf exercise. Um, there's more stuff that you can do in the gym. You can do seated calf raises. Um, some gyms have a calf raise machine for that, or you can use things like the Smith machine um, that works really well. Uh, you can adapt the, the calf raising standing to include a bent knee as well. These are all really good options for strengthening the calf. But if you're someone listening in with Achilles pain, I definitely get guidance from a health professional on what to start with. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you can dive straight into heavy stuff. It can be pretty provocative. Um, in terms of the other areas, um, you know, think the quads, squats are a fantastic exercise for quads. They can be progressed with added load. You can move on to single leg um, to make that more challenging. Uh, there's lots of stuff you can do for glutes. Um, single leg deadlifts are particularly good exercise for challenging all of the glutes. So, you know, you've got glute max and glute uh, med. Most people have heard of There's also another one called glute min that will be working when you're doing a single leg deadlift. So there's lots of different options, but the, it's really important for runners to find something that works for them. Um, it's, it's tempting to say, right, here's your list of things to do, but actually it's got to be about what works for them. And to be honest, no strength program is going to bulletproof you so much so that you can just train a hundred percent all the time. You still need to plan your training and progress it gradually um, to prevent these injuries from coming on. It's quite what you were saying about seeing a professional because the sort of component parts of the Achilles are the sort of the bits also that need to be. So, I mean, obviously generalized pain in the Achilles area isn't necessarily one injury in itself. There's a, a myriad of different things because the Achilles itself, the, the Achilles has a sheath that runs over it, which is like a collagen almost. And that, that can get, I've, I've damaged that before. And that I was like, oh, I've ruptured my Achilles. And it's not, it's just like the sheath on it's been damaged. And, and as you say, there's like nerves, deep nerves in the, in the, in the calf as well. So there's all these sorts of these, these bits, how, how, I mean, apart from a physical assessment, which is probably the clearest way of knowing, is there any way of sort of pinpointing what might be wrong with an Achilles when you feel a certain pain in that area? Yeah, so um, most Achilles problems that we were seeing runners are what we would call mid portion. So they're in the middle of the Achilles and you see your telltale signs of that. So you'll get things like early morning stiffness in that part of the tendon. So it'll be stiff when you first get up. Um, if you if you squeeze that ten, that part of the tendon, it'll often be uh, painful. It sometimes will actually be visibly swollen as well. Um, and tendons have this thing we call a warm up response. So it, it might feel quite sore at the start of a run, but then feel better as you go. That's quite typical of tendon. And they also have a delayed pain response, which is very classical tendon. So you might find you're going out for your run, it warms up as you go, but then you get up the next day and you're thinking, ah, do you know what, this is really sore now. And it's actually that delayed response, which is really important. So like Ben, for example, with your Achilles, if you were just getting a bit of mild pain during the run and it settled quickly and there was no sign of it the next day, that's usually a good sign. Um, it's more of a concern if you're getting up the next day and thinking, do you know, I can really feel that. But that, that's the most common Achilles issue we see. But there's also something called insertional um, Achilles tendinopathy, and that's lower down, so right where the Achilles tendon attaches to the heel bone. Now, it's quite important for people to know about this because its treatment is different. Particularly, it really doesn't like being stretched. So if you go and do loads of calf stretches, it irritates it. If you do your calf raises on a step, so you're stretching it as you go down with the weight, it really irritates it as well. Um, and then the other one is, as you say, that there's a, um, a sheath that surrounds the tendon that can become um, inflamed, which is slightly different. Um, now that can come with um, a really strange feeling around the, the tendon of almost like crackliness, a little bit like screwing up a crisp packet. Um, and, um, so if you've got that, if you're moving the tendon, you can feel this kind of crackliness going on. It's, it's often not that the tendon's damaged. It's, it's that the sheath surrounding it, uh, surrounding it is inflamed. And as it's sliding over the tendon, it's giving you these very strange sensations. So yeah, you're totally right. And that's why it's worth seeing someone to say, okay, what, what type of issue is this? What's the best management for you, you know, as an individual with, with insertional Achilles injury, which I think I've had quite on a minor level but I had a mate of mine who actually kind of prevented him from running for a number of months and it was quite a hard one 
seemingly to to fix. There's probably not as much literature about it, I think, in terms of how you deal with insertional Achilles uh, injuries, other than maybe not stretching it. What would you what would you recommend people do who have that? Yeah, so ins- insertional is more challenging to treat. You're, you know, you're absolutely right. There's not much research in it. So a, a big part of managing any um, Achilles pain is what we would would call this kind of load management. So first of all, whether it's insertion or mid portion, can we try and find out what this tendon can cope with um, in terms of running, sport and exercise? Um, and a sign that it's coping with it is that any pain during activity is mild. Yep. So maybe up to a two or three out of 10 and it settles quickly afterwards. So it's back down to normal the same day. Now, we, that gives us an idea that the tendon is coping, whereas if it's staying sore 24 hours later, it's too much for it. So people can adjust their exercise based on that. And it takes a little bit of trial and error. But with the insertional issue, because it doesn't like to be stretched, it often really doesn't like hill running. Okay. So yeah. that would be one of the first things we would say, right, let's let's bring out hill running potentially. It also won't tend to like more minimalist footwear. It will tend to be more comfortable in a shoe with a larger heel stack on it so that you, you've actually got the foot away from that stretch position. And it doesn't like to be compressed by the footwear. So it might be that a, a softer, more cushioned heel cup in the shoe is actually going to be more comfortable. Um, but again, when you're working with runners, I see in clinic, we're asking what aggravates this what makes it worse yeah and those are the things you want to manage quite often and bring them down to a copable level this is the runner's world podcast um it's good that you mentioned shoes there tom because it means we can segue into our favorite chat around carbon shoes and, <laughs> and those sorts of things now i mean i guess there's a a caveat with all these things that, that no shoe is actually going to damage you. You're sort of you're you're responsible as a, as the owner of the Achilles to make your Achilles as robust as you possibly can, and that's that's on you, not a, not a shoe. But have you have you have, you know with the invention of and the, the progression that we're seeing in running shoes being much bigger and higher stack heights and more cushioning and softer and all these sorts of things, is that a concern or is that just part and parcel of like choose the right shoe that suits you and, and you're fine. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a concern, really. I think the thing is just to remember that, you know, there's there's no kind of one shoe that works for everyone. And despite the marketing that might be out there for those various these various things, there's no one way that we should all pursue. Each different shoe type comes with its own pros and cons. So if you look at something like um, a very structured, supportive shoe, some, something like, a, you know, Asics Gel Kayano might be an example. So you, you're going to have a large heel to toe drop. Um, you're going to have quite a lot of support features through the arch of the foot. You can have quite a firm heel cup, um, all designed to reduce the stress um, on the foot and ankle and particularly the Achilles. So that may well do that. But the downside is that may lead to more stress on the knee. So there's always a bit of a trade-off with, with these things. So you look at a more minimalist shoe, um, it's lighter quite often, which is good in terms of efficiency, but because there's less cushioning, the muscles sometimes have to work harder. And because you don't have those support features, there's more stress around the calf and Achilles and sometimes around the front of the foot as well. So there's that trade-off, maybe less work for the knee, a little bit more work, more work for the calf and Achilles, which is what makes it so hard to say, right, this is the one shoe all runners should use. You know, it's thinking like what, what suits you? And ultimately the only way to know is to try these shoes out and see what feels comfortable for you. Is there any benefit, Tom, in, in thinking about your day shoe? Again, I'm thinking back to some of the things I've heard from sort of minimalist practitioners, but saying that if you were in a flat shoe, where your Achilles is probably doing a bit more work during the day, you're you're kind of better prepping it for like for load, in t- as opposed to like I guess the complete opposite of that would be if you're in a if you're wearing heels, for instance, right. and then then it would be such a shocker for your Achilles to be in a position where it's being stretched and then run on. Yeah, you'd be asking for trouble. Is that? But again, I mean, this, this isn't necessarily kind of coming from strict science, but this <laughs> is just some things I've heard. What do you think, yeah. Tom? Um, I, I'm not really convinced it would make a huge, huge difference um, in terms of, you know, the tendons ability to cope with with stress and load and things. Um, I think the footwear 
is probably at its most useful when someone's actually got pain. And if there's a particular pair of shoes that helps to settle their pain down, yeah. that can be useful. And actually, sometimes people will say, um, you, know, you know, if I wear heels, my Achilles feels better because there's less stress on the Achilles. Now, if that calms it down so that they can then do their rehab and return to running, that's going to be much more advantageous than trying to pursue a very flat shoe that's yeah, irritating yeah. your symptoms. I, I think as well, yeah, maybe you get a little bit out of these types of approaches, but you're going to get so much more out of a progressive strength program. Um, you know, so if you're thinking, I, I really want to strengthen up the calf, I want to get a nice, strong, healthy Achilles, seeing someone to get a good strength program is probably, you know, that's the first thing I would do yeah. personally. Mm. I mean, it's, it's such a, I mean, yeah, so I've got a race in a couple of weeks' time and I've sort of taken uh, time out of running because I was, it, it's been fine. It's mi mildly tender to touch on my Achilles and I think this is probably the the sort of stuck place that some people get to where they're just suddenly like, I feel like it would be all right on race day, but I'm not going to try and add any more to it now and sort of like do any further damage. Is there any sort of, I don't know, are there any sort of like real blindingly obvious things about like, uh, running getting running again with uh, post achilles issues or anything like that i mean obviously if you're mid plan you can't just launch straight back into the mileage that you were previously doing or you know is it is it one of these things because we've talked about it liking load is it one of those injuries that once you've managed the recovery you should sort of be very wary or is it sort of back to back to normal um, it will, it will vary quite a lot patient to patient, but there's certainly things I would look, look out for. So for example, Ben, with your Achilles, um, do you get much pain just walking? Can no. you walk half an hour pain free? Yeah, um, that's all fine. I'm not, it's not particularly yeah. stiff in the morning, as you were referring to before. Good. I don't really have any Good. of that. I would say the main, and I, I did a bit of running with Rick the other day and I didn't really have anything. And I certainly didn't have any delayed afterwards. I'd say the main Good thing is the touch and ever so slightly the sort of crackly sheath thing i guess is probably okay. the more applicable but yeah it's more just i i felt it when i was running and i could still run with it and then it was a bit like that's that was now sort of touch and it wasn't before so that's like <laughs> that's yeah. the main indicator yeah, yeah. yeah okay so you know this is how we would approach achilles in clinic by the way we want to explore what you're telling us a little bit more to give us an idea of what your achilles is coping with so um you went running with Rick. How far did you go? So, all right. I mean, this is fascinating. Four, four miles. Four, four. This was this was post initial. The, the The original issue came when I was doing some kilometer repeats on a longer mm -hmm. run, and that okay. was the one where I was just a bit like, ah, oh, this doesn't feel normal. And then I went running mm -hmm. again with Rick, and we did about four, five miles, and it was it was zone two, five miles, that kind of easy stuff. And I think that that, that was that was fine. Okay. So, was there any pain during that run? No, that was fine. No. And, and I, any I, reaction the next day in terms of actual pain during activity? No. No. So would it be fair to say that the main concern then is it the pain when you, you feel it, you, you squeeze it? Yeah. And also the sort of like, I've got a trail marathon, so it's going to be hills and mm -hmm. it's going to be distance. And it's all the sort of things that like Achilles are going to be like, oh, thanks a lot. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. That, that would be like my main concern is, yeah, like yeah. possible more damage and those sorts of things. Okay. So, um, what you're telling me there, all those signs and symptoms are good. It suggests that the Achilles isn't particularly irritable because when it's really stirred up, you'll get often lots of early morning stiffness, pain with walking, day-to-day -day pain, and obviously pain during or after the running. Now, the, the squeeze pain you're getting actually is a little bit of a red herring. It's not a good measure to rely upon. So quite often people will be running comfortably, doing most things comfortably, but it still will be a bit sore to squeeze it. In fact, quite a few people with healthy pain-free tendons, if you squeeze the tendon, it hurts just because it's a sensitive part of the body. So I, I wouldn't use the squeeze pain as much of a, a measure for how the Achilles do it, is doing. I'd, I'd use more of like, how is it responding to the running? And we talk about this idea of load management. We're looking for something that the Achilles can cope with, you know, minimal pain during without lasting reaction afterwards. So from what you're saying, it sounds like that run with Rick, it was coping with. Do you see what I mean? So rather than saying, right, Ben, stop all running, I'd be more inclined to say, okay, well, you know, you can manage four to five miles or whatever pace that was. So can we now start make, getting you doing another run of similar kind of distance and pace to get you back into your training. So it's less about stopping altogether and more about, can we find that 
um, manageable level for you to do and then gradually uh, build up. Um, how long until the, the marathon? Uh, 12 days. 12 days. <laughs> okay. So you're in that territory as well where you're close enough to the event that you don't want to stir it up because you're not going to have much time to recover. You're also in that stage where you can't get a lot fitter in those final 12 days. Alas. Alas. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> God, um, I was really but, hoping. I was relying on those 12 days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, what I wouldn't, I wouldn't put yourself under pressure to go out and do loads more. But if you want to try some runs that are likely to be manageable, um, you know, somewhere up to a maximum of about four miles slowly, it would be reasonable to try that because you've done that recently and it's coped with it. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a trade off as you get this close to an event. Um, you might then choose for the last sort of four, you know, three or four days pre event just to take it easy and not do anything more. So it's comfortable on the day. I'm fine by me. Yeah, that's and good. Yeah. The, the, the other thing that's quite important to recognize is we say that oh, I don't want to do any harm. That for, this isn't really about damaging the Achilles for the most part for, for, for most runners. It, it actually isn't damaged by running. But what happens is it, it it literally physically swells in response to being overloaded. It's still really strong. It's still really tough, but it becomes sensitive. So it isn't that you're likely to damage it so much during, during a trail marathon. But what you might find is it's sore for quite a while afterwards. And obviously that will be need to be managed. Um, now, obviously, when we say this for people listening in, we always say, look at your own individual situation, speak to a health professional about these things. But in, in general, pain in this uh, situation isn't actually about harm to the tendon. Yeah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Because yeah. that's, I mean, that's where your mind goes course, immediately, isn't it? Because like, yeah. any runner who feels pain is suddenly like, I've torn them, damaged it. Yeah, what it. am I doing? Oh, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's going to be over. What, what yeah. about, um, what role does like self-massage or like the foam roller play here? Because I think I've reached for the foam roller for like, Oh, I've got a sore Achilles. I would just roll my car and massage guns. That's, and everyone's that, got those that now. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, is that is that are people kind of barking up the wrong tree there with a sore Achilles, or is that is that uh, something I you think, recommend? I think they are a bit. If I'm being completely honest, I, I'm I have you know I think sometimes you can try some massage to the calf itself and see if that helps you. It's certainly not going to cause um, any harm to do that if, if it's you know if you've got no pain or any issues in the calf. Um, I would be very careful about massaging over an irritated tendon because, you know, as you've been saying, Ben, it hurts to prod it. So getting in there and prod it and poking it is likely to probably make it worse. But one of the things we tend to do with massage guns, foam rollers and stuff like that is we use them as a sticking plaster. So we do too much training. So something's really sore and tight and then we pummel them with something to make it feel better. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would look at that and go, okay, well, Let's look at the training. Let's bring that down to a manageable level. Um, and then when it comes to massage, it actually is a study that's looked at this. So they, they looked at people with Achilles tendon pain and they compared the effects of giving them one session where they were given exercises to do for the calf versus 18 sessions of massage to the calf and the long-term outcomes were the same. So 18 sessions of massage didn't miraculously improve outcomes. Yeah. Um, so... You know, and that mirrors what we see clinically. We, so much of, of it is about can we get the stress on the tendon to a level it can cope with? Can we build up your strength and gradually get you back to where you want to be? Right. And, and one final thing, not just, I'm not talking about me because I feel like I've had enough like personalized <laughs> training. Great, yeah. But um, what about things like taping? Because I'm always fairly dubious about sort of taping in terms of how it's going to actively... Like K-tape. Yeah, yeah, how it actively yeah. affects a tendon. It's like, another... Yeah. Is it, is, it, is it a one, good thing? Yeah. Sorry, it's another one where the, the, the evidence isn't, isn't very good at all for, for um, those types of tapes. But I think there can be a role sometimes in the lead up to an event. So if, if you find, for example, that someone straps up your Achilles um, in a way that's designed to reduce some of the stress on it, and there are you know, one or two techniques that would be designed to do that, mm. and then you find, you know what, I can run more comfortably without lasting reaction afterwards, then by all means use that for the event to try and reduce some of the stress on the tendon. But when you consider the amount of stress the tendon's got to do, the tape effects are going to be relatively small. It. So it really is about seeing if it works for you. But what we don't want is, right, I'm going to take my tendon up for every run. You know, 
that's not a long-term strategy, really. It's a short-term way to get you through a race that's important to you. So, Tom, just to, to summarise, then, we, we say it's like try and work with what's manageable. Strength training is, is, is good and preferable to sort of self-massage. Mm-hmm. And probably the nature of some of your running should be looked at if you've got an Achilles injury. So, like, we're talking about maybe reducing hills or reducing speed. Would that be a fair kind of summary of yeah absolutely try try to reduce the things that aggravate it and do as well you know see a health professional about it because you know what we say here can only be generic it's really important to get advice for you on an individual level i would say it can make a big difference so if people want to find out more about you tom and 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 your work where can where can we go Uh, you go to my website which is uh, running-physio.com or you can come say hello on on twitter i'm at tom goom uh, on twitter Great. So thanks very much for your time. Thanks for coming on the, the podcast talking about all things Achilles. I think Ben's feeling even more prepared for his trail marathon. Um, I'm ready. This is it. You're I'm ready gonna, to go? I'm going to go and do 12. No, I'm not going <laughs> to go off and run some ludicrous difference. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was great. Thank, Thank you, you, Tom. Thank you very much for, for having me. It's been really good to chat this through. So that brings us to the end of this week's Runners World podcast. A huge thanks to our guest, Tom Goom, and to you, of course, for listening. I'm sure you subscribe already to this podcast, but if you don't, you should. Um, You can also subscribe to Runners World magazine. Just Google subscription Runners World UK and you'll find the relevant page. And I'm sure there'll be some sort of snazzy offer on if you're a first-time subscriber. A number of issues at a reduced price, probably. Um, Runnersworld.com slash UK for all your running needs. There's going to be stuff about the Achilles on there, too. So go and have a read. Um, But yeah, thank you for listening and you'll hear from us next week.